Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In the comments to the previous video, a lot of people asked me to test the payload capacity of Ariane 6, and I'm not entirely sure why. I'm almost tempted to think that they were messing with me somehow, but uh, the payload user's guide for Ariane 6 has been released. We're pretty sure what they think the payload capacity of Ariane 6 is. It's not like in uh, quite in the midst of development in the same way that Starship is, for instance, or perhaps some other launchers are. So, yeah, and, you know, it's a... Uh, it's supposed to be a cheaper version of Ariane 5. It's just a minor development on that theme. So, but okay, I bite. And I decided to make the model. So what you see here is my own model of Ariane 6 based on uh, some graphic that was released by uh, ESA or whoever's in charge, <laughs> the Ariane group. Uh, but, yep, I'll talk about how I got the numbers because even though we have a lot of numbers for it and, um, you know, there's a lot of information about what it's supposed to be able to do, uh, the there are questions about it, especially when it comes to exactly what kind of thrust we get from the boosters and also the dry masses of the stages. So let me go through that. We know for sure that the boosters have 120 tons of fuel. That's why they're called P slash 120 boosters. <laughs> That's indicating how much propellant there is. So we do have that 120 tons of propellant. And uh, according to some sources, the burn time is 2 minutes and 10 seconds. So I have uh, assigned an amount of thrust to the SRBs that give us a um, nominal burn time of 2 minutes and 10 seconds. Now, as a result, the engine thrust is 2,923 in vacuum. Uh, that's for the SRVs again, uh, and the ISPs seem pretty consistent. Uh, there's multiple sources on that. So my ISP is 260 at sea level, 274.6 in vacuum. Now the average thrust of the boosters is lower than this maximum thrust, and that's because there's a thrust curve. And so I have assigned a thrust curve to it, and we'll see how that goes. The burn time will end up being more than two minutes and ten seconds. But we've got the right amount of fuel, and we certainly have a lot of thrust, so that's the important part. And we're getting off the ground with a good thrust-to-weight ratio. Uh, the qualities of the Volcane 2, and it's actually a 2.1, and this is the model I made. So I kept it simple, it's not that wonderful, but it's shiny. At least with Textures Unlimited, it's shiny. So we've got that. I don't know how it's oriented, there is a flaw in that I'm pretty sure it uses the gas generator exhaust to help with roll steering, but I don't really know how to do that. So um, it's gonna be free form on roll uh, for that part of it after the boosters go. But in any case, uh, the the thrust was easy to work out there. It's Well, uh, there's a configuration for realism overall for it anyway. So 1,359 uh, kilonewtons, and it seems like 362 sea level and three, uh, 431 uh, vacuum ISP, one ignition, 1.3 tons. So that's like that. And given that thrust on that engine, we have a burn time of the core of 465 seconds in total. And so I added enough fuel for that. It seems like... Uh, and uh, B14643 is a fairly common source for a rocket stuff, and it was estimating the dry mass uh, to be, well, it gives the dry mass including the engine, so I've uh, subtracted the engine out from this dry mass, and it seems like a reason, it's actually a fairly heavy dry mass for the this kind of tank, it's mm, 8 to 9%, and... Uh, the wet mass is 162.8, which seems a bit low. It seems like uh, the B14643 uh, source <laughs> is uh, suggesting that this should be 188.5 tons. But I don't understand how that can be with the burn time being what it is and the thrust being what it is. It's possible that the thrust is higher then. And so the decoupler goes with the tank here. So we separate it off like that. And here's the Vinci engine. And so we can deploy extension. So we have the little extension thing. Uh, and that's 
as good a model as I was going to make of it. So there we are. It's fairly, I kept it fairly simple, admittedly. And uh, yeah, the second stage is there. The second stage dry mass is based on extrapolation from previous stages, like from the Arium 5, based on the amount of, uh, actually we should retract that first, uh, amount of propellant we have. So we've got 30 tons of propellant is what the estimate is. And that gives us a uh, good enough burn time with the Vinci engine. So yeah, so it's about right. Yeah, 30 tons of propellant gives us a uh, burn time of 760 seconds. Now, do we want that when going to lower orbit? That's a good question. I didn't make a payload adapter here. I did do the payload fairings, but no payload adapter. And um, we could underfuel this to get better thrust to weight ratio. Uh, I don't think it's necessary. The Vinci engine is a little bit more powerful than, well, it's 180 kilonewtons compared to what the RL-10 does, so I don't think we need need to underfuel, but we'll see. So, with all that, uh, there's one little tweak I need to do. I've already changed my uh, configuration, but it seemed like uh, these flopped off a little bit too strenuously. I've already uh, tested it to, um, to decoupling, so I wanted to make sure the decoupling worked. I, I, I've been having a little bit of trouble with that, actually. So we've got these, no the nose cones are separate. They've got, oh shoot, I get they rotated. Uh, nope, that's fine, like that. We have to make sure that the stripe lines up. The stripe isn't exactly what it was in the images, but it's close enough, I think. And yeah, so I'll limit the thrust on the separatrons there, which are like right here. That's where the thrust comes out of. And we'll see what happens. So, okay, save and uh, you know what? Let, let me reduce the amount of solid fuel as well. Okay, launch. Uh, we've got the sun behind us. I actually want the sun on this side, so let me time warp a little bit. So we're carrying the norm, not, normal payload capacity for this launcher to LEO with four boosters. I don't know why. My fairing seems to be a little bit iced or something. I don't know how that happened. Uh, but 21.6 tons is what we're carrying. I mean, that, that sort of thing would make sense for down here, but <laughs> not for the payload fairing. I'll have to work on that. All right, throttle up, SAS is on, and ignition of the Volcane 2.1, technically, and launch. So lots of get up and go, as you can see. We're not launching from Kuru. That's a bit of a flaw, admittedly. But we're also not launching a geosynchronous satellite, so... Which is what the launcher is designed for. Again, I, I'm launching from here because it's prettier, because we've got the ground textures. <laughs> it's, I'm, I'm very simple. So, if anything, it can have a little bit more thrust than this, especially on the Vulcan 2.1. It doesn't have less thrust than this. You can see the thrust levels uh, varying, and that's because of the, the thrust curve on the boosters. Right here, it doesn't show what the thrust is, really. It only shows the max thrust there, but... The thrust is going to vary down here based on the thrust curve on the boosters. Yeah, I've been having a little bit of trouble because I make a custom decoupler for the boosters. I often try not to do that because it's a pain. And sure enough, it was a pain this time too. So we're at 2 minutes and 10 seconds, so that's what the burn time on the boosters should be. But they go a little bit longer because of the thrust curve. Uh, that should be all right. And let's separate. Oop, that's... I, I think I was a little bit early. Well, they went off safely. <laughs> oh, but we've got a residual roll. Well, shoot. Especially since we can't control roll with this. Well, now we've got that roll going. I don't know when they would release the fairings, but it's plausible to do it now instead of after the 
the upper stage ignite, so we'll just go ahead and do it. That's good. A little bit of resi the residual roll because this is rolling, but they wouldn't roll otherwise. Uh, we could probably keep it to 24 degrees. So I'm going to toss this to a relatively high low Earth orbit, like 300 kilometers or so. Just to give the upper stage enough time since we kept it fully fueled. Now, you might have seen the Delta V and the VAB being over 10,000 meters per second and figured, well, we could probably carry a heavier payload and I think we could carry a heavier payload, but you also do have to remember the long burn time on the upper stage, which, um, yeah, there is that part too. Okay, so we've kept the pitch up here, separation. And I could put separatrons on there, but it's okay. Nozzle extension and RCS on so that we can stop rolling finally. Okay, we are at long last close to making orbit here, and we'll see how much delta V we have left. So that's a lot of delta V actually. Maybe they carry the fairings uh, until the second stage ignites. The pretty big fairings though. Um, so that's about 300 kilometers ish and we have 771 meters per second left. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna increase the payload mass to reduce our delta V by 700 or so meters per second and we'll launch from Kuru instead. So let's see now. So we've we've certainly established that the rated payload capacity is okay. We were launching from a more diff difficult location, we had some issues with the S uh, SRV separation, so lots of business there. And again, we have less thrust, if anything, so... Let's go 26.65 tons, then see how that works. And we'll go... we need a little bit of margin after all. We're not gonna pack it in to the point where they barely get to orbit. So 26.6 tons, so that's actually 5 tons more than what has been said, I believe. And we will launch from Kuru. Okay, we are at Kuru, and we'll go for it. Let's see what happens. And SAS on, throttle is up, ignition. Now I just have a procedural decoupler, I don't have a payload adapter. So if the payload adapter adds a whole lot of mass, that does change things a little bit. But probably not a whole lot. I'm not gonna link this in the video description just yet since it will be packaged with the rest of my Real Rockets pack and I'll just do a video where I introduce the full Real Rockets pack and it'll be part of that. Okay, looking good. I don't know if they're gonna actually have this... I don't know about the little orangey gold stripes or the blue stripes on the boosters. I figured that's just marketing, probably. Or the gray bits. I don't know what, why they have the gray bits. It's probably all going to end up looking white anyway with the frost on the cryogenic stages. So unfortunately it doesn't show me the thrust, but I could probably judge based on the fuel flow when to get rid of them. The fuel flow will go with the thrust curve anyway. Oh, the percent rated thrust is on there too. That's good. Yeah, I was just a little bit early on the zero there. Let's... Okay, now we'll do. Uh, they still flop a little bit too much. Oh, I've sort of left the fairing separation off for a little bit longer. Let's just do that now. We are in space. And they're off. So that might have cut a little bit into it. We'll see. Hmm. Well, we're close to the end of the stage, but I didn't leave as much stage time, nor are we nearly as high. We will see. Maybe that will work out for us? I don't know.
I guess I was flatter earlier on. Well, let's go with more pitch. On the bright side, we have more horizontal velocity. Downside, less time to apoapsis. Oh, uh, I think I might have messed up the trajectory this time. Definitely need more time. No, we're temporarily back in the atmosphere. <laughs> Well, we might be able to salvage it thanks to the fact that the Vinci engine can reignite. And we're not burning up right now, so... Okay, well, we've got apoapsis of 256 and a periapsis of 52. But we have now the luxury of some time to apoapsis, and so... We'll just coast up there and try and get into a proper orbit, but this time was tighter. Mainly trajectory problems. Um, if I had done that a little bit better, things would have been cleaner, but maybe we'll get this 26.6 into orbit. Okay, RCS is turning to prograde, and we'll see whether our 92 meters per second gets us to where we need to go. Actually, the RCS could probably help a little bit, but that would take a very long time. <laughs> so. Okay, fuel is settled and ignition. Okay, well that's a circularish orbit. Just as planned, right? No, 263 by 253, a tiny bit of fuel left. And I think that does it for me as far as trying to estimate how much this can carry. 26.6, .6, I'd say 26 with buffer, and if I do the trajectory right, we should have even more buffer, but yep, here we are. I guess we can ceremoniously deploy the payload. Off it goes, though we can't know anything about it anymore. But yeah, so, well, as requested, there you go. I'll package this with the real rockets pack and uh, make a video about that soon. But with this, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.